Hifumi G asks, am I going to at least do a video of Bomber Girl when it comes out on Steam? I have not heard of this. Me either. Oh, L L Dapper Greninja wants to know when, uh, Jacob, when, when can we expect WarioWare Gold? Um, uh, all I gotta do right now is wait for uh, Thorne to send me the 3DS for recording, and um, I'm, I'm gonna be moving here in like a week, so we have to wait for that to be done. Um, but once he sends it over, I'll get right to work on it. So like a month or two. Yeah. Probably at the most. There he is, too. Fuki Ando wants to know when am I playing Twilight Princess HD. It's it's still in the pipeline. I've got a bunch of other portable Zeldas happening. I keep pushing back the DS Zeldas, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks because uh, I wanted to focus on Sonic 06 getting that finished since Yoshi only had so much time, but it's just a matter of recording it, getting like getting an actual backlog in case like if he does get that job at the bank, then he's gonna have even less time. So. Yeah. It always happens. Every time I have the free time, I'm like, I'll never get a job. And then when I start planning stuff, I got a job. <laughs> Burger House Minish Cap is up next. It is. It's um, one of the upcoming LPs for patrons first. Um, how's the game so far, anyway, Thorn? Minish Cap surprised me with how good it is. I still say it's one of the most underrated Zeldas. Heavily. It's one of the higher quality ones. Like, the second half takes a dip with the dungeons, which become real pains, but otherwise, like, there's an amazing amount of detail to it. Are we gonna do Spyro Reignited when it comes out? Mm, probably not. I'm excited as fuck for that, though. Because it looks gorgeous. Like, Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy looks good, don't get me wrong, and the animation is fine, but the animation on Spyro Reignited looks, like, on another fucking level. And I was so disappointed, but I understand that it got delayed, because it was supposed to come out in September, now it's coming out in November. And I'm a little tiny bit worried, because it comes out the day before Fallout 76... I'm sure people will buy both, but I'm just, I just hope, like, people, they do the remake and then it comes out and then it doesn't sell as much as Crash Bandicoot and they're just like, well, we'll make another Crash game, but Spyro, unfortunately, did not meet sales expectations, you know? I don't, I don't know, I don't think, I think enough people are excited that it's gonna still be pretty successful. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Fruitful Quests, would Twilight Princess HD be 100% run? Yes. Same as the first go through a Twilight Princess. Ruby Hardy, what about Zelda Four Swords? I think the re-release on 3DS can be played multiplayer, but otherwise, it's not something I'm really interested in. You know how long I was excited to play the original Four Swords on the Game Boy because I couldn't figure out how to do it because I didn't have another person to play with, and they re-release it, and then I figure out it's literally just like a bunch of whatever levels that you just dick around together. Yeah, it's just a bunch of puzzles. Now, Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube, on the other hand, that's a real game. I love that game, I actually own it. Yoshi, are you going to start doing commentary on the Straw Hat? No, well, I kind of already have been. He is right now. <laughs> yeah, right now! But if you mean, like, do my own, like, Let's Plays again and stuff like that, it has been a thought. I did have a list of, like, some games I wanted to do. Then I was like, yeah, screw it, I'll just start doing streams and stuff like that. And then that didn't really... It didn't, it's not that it didn't work, it, I did God of War, and it actually, the streams were just went just well, I actually enjoyed doing them. But it, it was just more that I, I got another job, and that I was just basically doing that. I just didn't I really have the time to, because I, that's when I got my SGA promotion, and then all this other crap happened. Uh, so yeah, uh, if anything, I was kind of trying to start doing videos again, not necessarily Let's Plays, but... I was kind of hoping to do retrospectives, actually. Uh, mainly for franchises that mean a lot to me, personally. I've, was, I've been watching a lot of old documentaries. Like, one of my favorite channels on YouTube right now is Defunct Land. Because uh, he covers old amusement parks and abandoned amusement parks. If you haven't seen Defunct Land any episode, I highly recommend it. Because it's a guy who's clearly passionate about what he does. And he goes extremely well into detail about what the amusement park did, who built it, why it was built. Uh, and, and if every episode feels like its own mini documentary, and I really like that. And so I want to do something similar to that, but for like Smash Brothers and uh, games that meant a lot to me when I was growing up. 
So that's what I've been thinking about doing. Because I feel like it, it's not necessarily content that I could pro like just make every week. I, I want to aim for like quality, basically. So that's what I've been thinking about doing. What channel? I, I've been debating on putting it on my own channel. Maybe not the one with the fanfics on it. Because I did make a new channel to start putting videos there on Movie Straw, and I only put one. And then I was like, boy, gotta go to work. So if I did do them, probably back on Movie Straw? I don't know. Did you answer that question already from God of Destruction Yomi? I think you did a small video about it. Yeah, I actually asked my patrons, and for the most part, they're down for a Majora's Mask 3D LP. I also asked them if they were interested in me doing Ocarina of Time 3D Master Quest. And... For the most part, they're down for both, but that's going to be way later. Ah, yeah, the Star Fox Adventure Let's Play. I still kind of want to do that, and I think I actually do... I want to do a retrospective on Star Fox in general. But I still... I feel like that's the one game I should actually do Let's Play for, the Let's Play for. Star Fox Adventure? Yeah, it's yeah. Adventures for Geek. I think I still have my copy. Yeah, I'm very looking forward to WarioWare Gold. It's... it's... I really like the game. It's a very... I don't know if I like it more than Smooth Moves. Uh, it definitely has a lot more to do than Smooth Moves. I was thinking about 100%ing it, but I was thinking of going a different direction. I might just try to 100% it on my own time and show off what 100%ing it does, because it's not like a game where you can go around collecting collectibles and showing where they are. So it's not like... There's not really much of a point of doing it on camera. And I honestly, I don't want to 100% the game twice. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to show all the features of the game, 100% it on my own time, on my own uh, file, and show off some bits um, that you get from 100%ing the game, and just things that are interesting enough to show. Because a lot of it is like Nintendo gallery stuff, where they like show little bits of Nintendo's history, and they're, j they're just like informational things, and some mini games. I'm going to all play all the mini games, of course. I hope that everything I said made sense, because I feel like it might not have. <laughs> no, it sounds fine to me. Uh, Yoshi, you mentioned you have a second channel. What's that one called? I It's literally called Movie Straw. I'll just link it down here. There's only one video on it I was going to put up. I was going to upload, because I made a couple videos, and I uploaded it to my Tumblr, and they got, like, thousands of notes. And I was planning on re-uploading them to YouTube during E3 last year, but then I ended up not doing it. And instead, I ended up uploading the last one I made. And, uh, I was gonna make a Nintendo one too, but then I didn't. Uh, so, uh, half of it was because of work, half of it was for other reasons. Uh, I think the reason why was because, like, uh, Dakota came and visited me, and then we kind of spent the week together while E3 was happening. So, I kind of, like, pushed those videos aside. That's why the Bethesda E3 one became, came out before like two months after E3 was already done. So the, the iron wasn't even hot anymore, but I asked on my Tumblr if people wanted to see it. They said yeah, so I did it. Um, Yoshi, would you ever do more fanfic readings? I'm a little torn on it, mainly because I did enjoy those fanfic readings, but I, I, part of the fun about the fanfic readings is that you just kind of read it to have a laugh. You just kind of do it like, ah, oh, but look at this piece of shit, it's fun. And it's fun to do it when you have, like, a bunch of, like, a group with you. Like, reading it by yourself, it's, like, one thing, but... Because I did try that, but it's just kind of boring. With other people, it's cool. But, uh, sometimes you just don't have that same group you used to be. Because there's a lot of people in the old fanfics that I, I haven't heard from in a long time. And or I just straight up don't talk to anymore. <laughs> Including right now. There are a lot of people that I don't actually talk to. Yeah. People are asking, hey, when's Travis going to come back? And it's like, I literally don't talk to him. I would love to, but like, nothing to do with our relationship. It's just, I don't talk to people when I'm not actively working with them. I'm just kind of shitty like that. As for me, like, I've talked to Travis on occasion, but I just feel like he's got his own thing going on, and I got mine. It's like, I just don't want to bother him just to be like, you want to do a thing? Eh. He is doing stuff with High Wang, if you folks want to see him in Let's Plays. So it's like, I don't know if he's down for LPs now, because he dropped out because he had no time at all. Yeah, I know. He even left a comment in one of the... I forget which Sonic 06 part was, but he did leave a comment. Yeah, I think it was the first one. So he, he does watch every now and then. And also, uh, referring to the fanfic readings, I think part of the reason that we stopped as well is that 
they came from sort of a mean-spirited place a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, holy. That's why, like, if you do ever decide to do them again, I probably won't be a part of it. If I did them again, I probably wouldn't be as harsh, because it was like, read two lines, this is the worst person, I hope he dies, like, Jesus Christ, kid, he just wrote a fucking story about a horse, who cares? Yeah. Like, if I did, like, I'll it'll still be fun to make fun of, like, the spelling errors and stuff, and, like, things like that, but I don't think it'll be as, uh, as, like, acid-filled as it was in the old, because, like I said, it's kind of like... Like, a bunch of guys get together, and you just kind of, like, dick around, and, like, you say dumb stuff because you're hanging around, but then, you know, like, you get back home the next day, and you're like, oh, fuck, I gotta go to work, that kind of thing. That's how I feel, like, the the fanfic readings are, like, like, they're fun, but I have not listened to any of them in a long time, yeah. and I probably don't plan to, because I'm just gonna be, like... <sighs> <laughs> Looking back on what we thought was funny then, I probably would be very uncomfortable going back and listening to them. I was like, yeah, it's like just remembering like some of the jokes made. I'm like, that's not who I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just watch like yourself growing up, so you like listen to your old shit, and it's it's not like my bad voice acting. It was just like, Ugh, I was I was not good. It's like you listen to this is you as a teenager, and you're like. Yeah. So, yeah, I was like 16 when we did most of those. <laughs> now I'm 23 was, and I'm like, I was I was an edgy <laughs> idiot. I was 17 and now I'm 25. <laughs> God, if I listen to him now, I'm just going to be like, why was I like that? Why did you people hang with me? Yes. Okay. CJ really wants us to read their fanfic. I we I read like the first chapter the other day and it is it's a hoot it's a hoot. Is CJ Nilafe? Yes. Ah. Yeah. I recognize that it's CJ because of the Garfield icon. <laughs> like bootleg high Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's I read like one chapter of their fanfic and it that they wrote when they were like twelve. And it was very, it was entertaining. We, maybe we could just do it on our own time. Not sure if, not sure if we would upload it, but. I kind of regret deleting my old fanfics, because I could have wondered, like, if I was going to read any fanfics, my old ones would have been great. But now it's like, I deleted those because I was ashamed. And I had, I was too smart to not <laughs> delete it. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. Like, I have a similar feeling about my old YouTube channel that I had when I was 13. Because it was horrible content, but it's still stuff that I was, like, very connected to. And it still am. And I'm like, wow, I wish I could go back and watch some of those old-ass videos I made when I was, like, 13. However, I recently deleted my DeviantArt page, and I have no qualms about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was some horrid shit on there. Not just, like... It, again, it's just a product of who I used to be, like, when I was a shit teenager. I'm like, uh, the art's bad, jokes are bad, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna delete it. <laughs> Man, I kinda wish I didn't delete my old Sonic fanfics. I have a hard drive with them still on it, but it got corrupted and only most of the chapters are still readable. Maybe not most, but a handful of them. And it's weird because it's like, I could write, but my some of my ideas were so stupid. That's an interesting combination. I even, like, I found an archive for the old Sega forums that I used to go on when I was 12. And that was me actually going on the internet for the first time. And I found me writing, it's like, I'm surrounded by bad grammar and spelling, and here I am and I can actually type. It's weird. God, I remember having an account on the Sonic old Sega forums. Uh... To give you an idea of how early internet this was, this was like, DSL was the new hot shit at the time. I'm willing to delete my old fanfics from when I was 14. These were fanfics that I was putting into the Sonic Games board section. I wasn't even putting it in Sonic fanfiction. Oh, so like all these games discussions were going on here. Nine-year-old me going like, all right, here's my new fanfic. I call it Sonic the Hedgehog and Majora's Mask. <laughs> Don't drop the moon on me. <laughs> like, literally all I did was, like, even, like, <laughs> it wasn't even Sonic was the best part. It, it, 
<laughs> I'm remembering this now. Holy shit! I think um, you've described this to me. Is it like it, was Sonic completely incidental to the whole thing? It was just Majora's Mask again. It was basically no. Sonic wasn't even in it. The protagonist was <laughs> Tails. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> like, Tails was the protagonist. He was Link. But the idea was that he was really stupid because I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if he was not smart? And, it, like, basically, it was like the game, but, like, this is this is the game through the eyes of a nine-year-old who didn't understand anything about himself and the concepts he's currently writing with. I remember... Eggman was Skull Kid, but he was just a fucking regular ass Eggman, but he had the mask. And so it was basically me following the game verbatim, sort of, but I wouldn't copy the lines line for line directly. And I would just like write, and I'm like, that's ah, boring. I want to get to the part to where Tails gets hit in the nuts with a hammer. I really like that joke for some reason. <laughs> I used it like eight times. <laughs> you had a style. I had my own. St uh, keep in mind, I was like nine, and I really liked, <laughs> I really liked slapstick. So when he was getting hit in the nuts with a hammer, it was like a giant cartoon mallet. I mean, that still hurts, but I was, I don't know. I was a kid. What can I say? I'm remembering vague details about it. I think the reason why I even wrote it was because there was somebody who had another fanfic, uh, but it was a, a parody of Ocarina of Time with Sonic. But it was written by someone who clearly could write, but by clearly could write, I mean they were just older than me. They were like 15 or right. 16 or something. <laughs> and like, thinking about some of the things now, it's just like, oh, this is interesting, but half of it was just like, yeah, you have a DeviantArt account. So like, I remember that old fanfic was like, it was Sonic and Ocarina of Time, and they had a gag where he would act like the author would like show up and like put him in a red dress and stuff like that. And so I was like, if you're doing Ocarina of Time, I'll do Majora's Mask, but I'll use Tails because he exists. <laughs> and then, well, I think I got the funniest part about the whole thing was that not only was it written badly, but it was so early into me being a kid that like people would write like when they would like write into my because you would make a thread and then you would like write your fanfic so I, not only was i posting in the wrong section entirely <laughs> like people would be like wow you can't write and i would i would just update the fucking i would just update the thread with another chapter <laughs> you didn't even respond to anyone yeah i wouldn't respond to anyone they were just talking i'd be like so here's chapter two like, I literally remember distinctly this one dude, he had, like, the, a wolf icon or something, and he wrote this whole thing about, like, look, buddy, I get that you're, you're, you're trying to write this thing, but it's just, you can't write, and nine-year-old me is like, so chapter 15, right? So Tails gets in with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, he probably thought I was, like, an actual, like, person at his age, but all I did for the most part was key smash and write dumb jokes that, like, they would be appealing to nine-year-old. Nine year Whew. God, I, I just remembered all of that because you mentioned the Sega Force. <laughs> you had an experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yoshi, why not read that Sonic X Majora's Mask at some point? I can't because Sega Forms are dead and this was years ago. Also, I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, like 15 years ago now? Had to have been. Yeah, I can't imagine finding anything that's 15 years old on the internet. Yeah, it was, it was really dumb. <laughs> the Dapper Greninja asks, Thorn, if I had to recommend another infamously shitty game for a milestone, perhaps Mega Man X7. The thing is, I'm not good at Mega Man games. I feel like I could get into the X games, but the thing with Sonic 06, yeah, it's infamously bad, but also, like, I have a history playing Sonic games. So, like, I have, I had a leaping off point so that I could actually get through this game. I don't know if I could with any of the Mega Mans. Plus, like, I, I haven't seen a ton of Mega Man X7, but it also looks pretty boring. Yeah, if it's bad as in boring, it's not so interesting. As redundant as it is to say. It's not only bad, but it's just a low point for the series. It's like, it was already, like, declining after, at, like, Mega Man X6, which, like, retcons the ending to X5. And then X7's just, it just kind of took a dump. And then X8, I hear, saved it a little bit. So, 
And then they, I hear that in the X Legacy Collection, they have like a little thing, I think, at the, on the soundtrack or something that says X's fight is not over yet, which is implying that there will be an X9 after all these years. So if they do make an X9, I'm, I hope it's like a return to form. I wouldn't be surprised. Like a Mega Man 11. My favorite of the Mega Mans, because I played all the classic ones, I played some of X, my number one. The very first Mega Man game I ever played was X4, and that's what started it for me. But I absolutely adore the Mega Man Zero series. That's my favorite. You know, on the topic of fan fiction, I, I think I mentioned this to you before, Yoshi. I don't know if I've ever mentioned you to Thorn or Chat, but like this was really recently, like a few years ago. I had this idea that I was super proud of for a crossover fan fiction between Steven Universe and Metal Gear Solid Five. You did tell me this. I, I remember that. And dude, was, did, it, did, did I start laughing immediately? I think you did. But just, it was, I had so many ideas. I was, I thought it could have made a pretty cool story, but I never wrote it. And I said, like, forgot most of it now. And I'm so sad because like, the only thing that could hold me back with that is the fact that I'm not good at writing. So... I'm just, like, it probably would have turned out bad, but I liked the ideas I had. It was just basically about Paradox crash landing in Afghanistan and then becoming a member of the Diamond Dogs. <laughs> you know, out of context, that's That would be amazing. <laughs> I want to hear that. <laughs> uh, I'd read it. You know, out of context, Paradox crash landing in Afghanistan <gasps> is way funnier. <laughs> that sounds incredible. <laughs> like, it's not that funny, because that's just where Metal Gear Solid Vibe takes place, but... <laughs> Crash lands in Afghanistan, becomes a member of Diamond Dogs. Yeah. That is a good beginning to a plot. It, it's like Paradot was my favorite character in the show anyway. Well, it was a Paradot. I don't know if it was the Paradot that we know, but fucking she... The, well, there's a bunch of different Paradots, you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. This was like the 80s. I don't know when Steven Universe takes place, but... Modern times kind of follows that fucking Metal Gear Solid 5 like archetype with the characters like Ocelot is weirdly trusting of, of Paradot uh, Kaz <laughs> isn't like that sounds cool just let her onto the base <laughs> well here's the thing they capture her first like it's not like she's like I'm, I'm coming with you now <laughs> they, they try to capture her they try to like oh god I'm, I still have the recording going <laughs> <laughs> oh me too <laughs> well don't stop this is gold alright fine alright <laughs> Um, they try to replicate their technology. I think at some point, like late in the in the um, in the story, they did end up making like limb enhancers for Snake. <laughs> that would have been kind of cool. And like they convince Paradot to go on missions with Snake, and she's like really good at it because Earth weapons are so fucking primitive compared to what Paradot knows. I I don't know. I feel like this sounds stupid coming out of my mouth. I feel like it could have turned out to, into something okay, at least intriguing. I mean, I'd read it. I'm kind of genuinely interested. I was really proud of it. Like, I would think about it all the time, and I would talk to CJ about it all the time. Because I kind of like the idea, because it's not just everyone in Steven Universe meets Big Boss. It's a specific <sighs> situation. Yeah. And Edaminke has a good point. Peridot would be more trustworthy than Huey. <laughs> I forget if Huey would have been in the in the story or not. Pro I don't think so. I think it might have taken place after Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> you, you mean you said uh, like, oh, as long as it's not like the cast meets this. Is, like, it reminds me of those old Scooby Doo episodes where like the mystery <laughs> gang would like like in this episode, Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the Harlem Globetrotters, but that's oh, yeah. better. <laughs> I remember that Richard one too. Richard Nix. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I just remember the title cards, but it would have like one of the characters like pointing a flashlight at who the like celebrity guest was. The new Scooby Doo movies. Yeah, the, the, those are, it just makes me think. As long as you don't do that with your fanfic, you're fine. Yeah, like here, another thing that kind of sounds dumb in hindsight. Is that like at some point Yellow Diamond was like, "Bitch, where the fuck are you?" And then ends up coming to Earth. This is before Yellow Diamond got revealed, and turns out she's like twenty feet tall. So I just imagine she, <laughs> at one point, like she and Snake have a fight, but, but like steps on him. Yeah, like I, I, 
at this point, like, the headcanon was that she was, like, maybe seven feet tall, but now that I know she's, like, 20 feet tall, that doesn't really work. Big Boss could still beat her. A at some point. He beat all of the AIs in Peace Walker. He bench-pressed a giant tank. He can take Yellow Diamond. You know, if he used weapons, you're right, but in this scene, it was like a fist fight. <laughs> like a CQC fight over fucking whether Paradot stays or goes, because at this point, Paradot like, kind of grew a loyalty to Diamond Dogs that didn't want to leave. Big Boss is magnetic. Yeah, man. For better or worse. And we better story than what happened with Quiet. Yeah. Man, I wish Metal Gear Solid V story was less garbage. Yeah. It's that thing at the end of the game, Quiet was the only character I cared about, too. Yeah. I cared a lot about... I still liked Ocelot and Kaz a lot. Wait. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> excuse me? Ocelot I know what you meant. Kaz? <laughs> Ocelot and Kaz. A lot, yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, I was like... Ocelot, Kaz, a lot, Lancelot. <laughs> I was gonna say, speaking of fanfics. <laughs> That's what I meant. I like that Ocelot's just a dude. He's just kind of down for everything. Yeah. And Kaz is just a dick. Yeah. A paranoid prick. Boss, Cypher betrayed us. Not like me when I worked for Cypher. And betrayed you. With Cypher. Everything is Cypher. Well, that sounds stupid. It is. But that's beside the point. I am loving Chip Cheesem's LP of Phantom Pain, yeah. It did get me to play the game again. And it is fun to play, but don't try and care about the story. Yeah, it's, it's extremely fun to play. The game itself is fantastic. I need to replay it, though. I haven't really touched it in years. During the summer sale, it and Ground Zeroes were $15 together. So I was like, what the hell? And of course, Ground Zeroes can't recognize my controller, so I can't play it again. Oh. You know, I'm, I've been thinking about getting, like, Metal Gear Solid Five on PC, because I I remember I downloaded the beta for Metal Gear Survive. I know, great idea. Um, <laughs> but I find my computer... Mostly just to see if my computer could run it, and it ran it really well, so... Yeah, the Fox engine can run really well on even older computers. Wow, really? It's so beautiful, though. It's a really good engine, and they're never going to use it again. I know. Dude, <laughs> I, I said this. I've been saying this for ages, and I feel like I sound dumber every time I say it, especially the later it gets and into this fad. But I really think the Fox engine or the Metal Gear Solid, Solid 5 engine in general could make a really good Battle Royale game. Just with the, how the controls are laid out, it could be very a very satisfying game to play. Maybe. If only Konami did that instead of another zombie game. Yeah. I was I was really rooting for Metal Gear Survive to not be bad, but it just looks so lame. Even the developers sort of sneaked in a little something. There's a someone has a clipboard. The first letters of all the characters read things like Kojima lives. And <laughs> basically it's just a big fuck you to Konami. Good. <laughs> Would you forgive Survive if it wasn't a Metal Gear game? No, because it just still looks boring. <laughs> it looks shit in ways many other games I wouldn't forgive or shit. Yeah, it's, it's. I don't think it matters that it was a Metal Gear game or not, it just doesn't look good. If it was a good game, everyone would be like, yeah, it's fun, but it's not a Metal Gear game. And, but it's just not fun. And also isn't loaded with microtransactions. Oh yeah, they make you pay for a new save slot. So yeah, why would I ever forgive that? <laughs> Did we do Thousand Year Door? No. We haven't done any of the Paper Marios. No. Nah. I wouldn't mind, I like the first two. Yeah. yeah, I'd be down for joining too, because I I like the idea of them, but I don't like RPGs enough to actually play them, so I'd like to experience them in some way. I forgot if I actually sold my copy of Paper Mario 2, I don't think I did, I should check. I did play Super Paper Mario, and I liked it, which may, seems, which I seem to be in the minority for that. I liked it too. I like Super, Super Mario was fine. To me, that is the last Paper Mario game. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> seem like there's been a good one since. Because, like, say what you will about the side-scrolling part, it was still an RPG, and it was still an interesting story. Yeah, the story was cool, the characters were great and funny, the gameplay itself was fun. You see, I I don't like turn-based RPGs, mostly. I like side-scrollers, and this was an act, a side-scroller that's very lightly an action RPG. So I thought it was, I thought it was dope. <laughs> I even consider it the third game, because to me it is. Oh, of course. It's like, you know what, it's a little, like, it's a little different, but I can see it as a nice little experiment maybe next game we'll go back to being traditional rpg and then they were like paper mario is about paper and nothing else i feel like 
Nintendo's kind of having a renaissance right now. Like, they're making some of the best games they've ever made. So I feel like one... I feel like a, a good new Paper Mario is not completely out of the question at all. It's not out of the question, but it's just comments from, like, the direction of where Paper Mario's going from the actual developers themselves. Especially the comment on, like, Mario & Luigi, where it's like, oh, if you want story, play the Mario & Luigi games. <laughs> Mario & Luigi is fine, I love Mario & Luigi, don't get me wrong, but that's more jokey-based than, and like, it's good for, like, the gameplay's great, don't get me wrong, but, like, people play Paper Mario because of the partner characters, because of the interesting worlds, how it deviates from regular Mario, like, that's what people like about it. Yeah. So once you started, like, cutting out all the things that made Paper Mario Paper Mario, well, you just get Mario. And from what I hear, not especially good Mario, anyway. No, Sticker Star was... And then... <laughs> Color Splash was... How do you spell that? Yeah. Uh, it looked a lot like... Uh, I'm gonna type it in the chat. Like that. Nothing's coming up for me. It's, it's in the, the game the chat. YouTube chat. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, there it is. Because <laughs> I don't even want to, like, pin it as, like, a Miyamoto problem, even though he is kind of part of it. Because, like, it was his idea to even do Mario RPG in the first place. He wanted to do a Mario RPG at some point. That's why we got Super Mario RPG, seven stars. Which is great. And, like, to me, I just think it's weird to, like, go back on that. I get that maybe RPGs might not be his favorite thing, but... The fact that Paper Mario Sticker Star was basically going to be what people wanted. Because you can see beta footage on where, like, Mario throws a chain chomp and it destroys a block. So, it, it made it seem like, oh, dude, finally, you're like, oh, well, I got Super Paper Mario was cool, now we're going back to the RPG stuff, and we have a chain chomp partner now. And then, once Miyamoto was like, this looks a lot like the one on GameCube, they were like, oh, fuck, we should change the whole game entirely. And that was the end. If you look at, like, early Paper Mario, like, and then Sticker Star, it doesn't even look like the same game. And honestly, I don't mind the paper effects, and I don't mind the whole thing system and all that other crap in the stickers. Like, that would have been okay if it was, like, a side Paper Mario game, or, like, a little light one or something. Yeah. Like, a spin-off of a spin-off, but then, right now, they, they're trying to make it, like, what Paper Mario is supposed to be. I know it's been talked to death, and I know everybody has already said this, but I just... It's just kind of a shame. I have no connection towards Paper Mario at all, but still, it seems... The, the whole situation seems very disappointing. Have you considered Splatoon? Uh, it's like a single-player Let's Play, or...? Because I... I love Splatoon. I actually have Splatoon 2, finally. I finally got a Switch. Uh, it was actually gifted to me from my friend Dan, and uh, I do like it quite a lot. I don't think the single-player is really more of anything. Uh, I, I know you didn't even ask people about it being a Let's Play, I'm just talking about it. But did you consider it? Mm, not really. Like, I, like the single-player stuff in Splatoon is fine, it just, uh, it's not really much. Like, the big boy stuff about Splatoon is the multiplayer. Yeah, can't really Let's Play that, you can do some fun videos on it, but... You could, it's just like, oh, well, in this level, you go get the things and solve the puzzle, and there you go. I still love Splatoon, don't get me wrong. Like, that, that, Splatoon is one of those games, along with Smash Brothers, that I get extremely competitive about. Yoshi, I cannot uh, wait to play Ultimate with you. I cannot <laughs> fucking wait. Dude, another fucking thing. I, I, this is something that has not been talked about enough. During the Smash Direct, that fucking green thing... What's the green thing, Sakurai? What do you mean you can't talk about it? It's right there. It's not a dick. I just I don't think it's a dick. It's right there. You can talk about it. We're happy to announce dick mode in the new Smash Brothers. <laughs> ah, Christ. Every character's moveset, but they're just a dick. <laughs> what would that entail? A dick. Ah. I haven't played Octo Expansion, but I do hear that it expands on the lore, so... I don't know. I don't really care for Splatoon's single player, so I would literally only buy it so I could play as an Octoling in multiplayer, and I don't think that's worth 20 bucks. Uh, like I was saying, I was, I'm really competitive for Splatoon. Like, during Splatoon 1, I actually did make S rank, and I did max it out to as much as I could. I thought you were going to say, I did actually make someone cry. 
I mean, you might have. <laughs> I did. I, I I actually beat them so hard that I went through my TV and appeared on their side and started berating them. <laughs> oh, no. Later, I learned it was a three-year-old, and I felt... And I felt better. I hate three-year-olds. Yeah, I felt better, because look at you. You're, you're smart enough to play games, but not be good at it. Uh -huh. oh, looks like you gotta get to rank X now, Yoshi. Yeah, rank. Like, that was that's basically my goal. I haven't started playing ranked on Splatoon 2 yet because of other games, but I'm definitely aiming for rank X. Then you gotta get rank X in fucking squad mode. I'll fucking do it. <laughs> Count me out. Like, Overwatch, that can eat a big ol' hairy dick. I don't give a shit about, like, ranked in there, but ranked in other games. Yeah. I'm t man, I've hardly played Overwatch in the last few weeks. You know what I've been playing? Goddamn Team Fortress 2. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I, what the fuck, like, a year ago me, where I was like, oh, Team Fortress 2 is a bad game, I'm never gonna play it again. <laughs> I'm a, I was a moron, dude. That game's still fun as hell when you get into it. I know people, because we just talked about Smash for a second, uh, I know people are saying it, that it's probably a subspace kind of story mode. I'm pretty sure it's some kind of adventure mode kind of thing. Yes. If they're gonna do subspace again, I... I only have one request. Two. Okay, I have two requests. Um, don't bastardize the characterization of Luigi and Lucas, but I know Luigi's already gonna be the same as he was. If the Simon trailer is anything to go off of it, don't bastardize your characters. I'm a traitor now. <laughs> <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also, um, because I hated how they portrayed Luigi in Brawl, they made him too much of a wimp. Especially for Lucas, where it's just like, I'm a psychic and I'm this, you know, I'm, I'm a prodigy. I reset the world. I can't get up. I tripped on a stick. I can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> fucking bullshit but also the only other thing i have is um i want it to be like a fusion of the melee adventure mode and the brawl one yeah. because i did like the cutscenes but i would have preferred it more if they went through like actual nintendo themed worlds as opposed to hey look you're in a jungle now you're in sky solve a boring puzzle here are your enemies do you recognize any of them no well they're boring Oh, here's a Koopa and a Goomba. I think, I feel like the reason that they may have, uh, may have done it like that was to make it, like, a little bit more logical for all the other characters to meet because they're meeting in some neutral place. You know what I mean? Eh. For me, it was just like, it's already a crossover game, so it doesn't really matter? Yeah, it doesn't. But I'm just trying to think like they do. Or if they might. Like, I'll give them points for, like, doing original stuff, like Taboo and Ancient Minister and, like, Subspace Bombs and stuff. Like, yeah, that's fine. I think that's cool. Yeah. But I just wish that it was, like, a mix. Like, now you're in Mario World and you're fucking Marth and Captain Falcon and you're beating up t turtles and you don't know why, but you're doing it. <laughs> and then there's a whole cutscene where, like, Mario shows up and they team up or something. Like, that, that would be awesome. A game where Mario is the last character you unlock. <laughs> Imagine. He's not even unlocked at the beginning. Like, they, have, they start with all the characters from Smash 1, except Mario. If, if you pick Mario, the game crushes. <laughs> Sakurai's picture appears of him frowning. <laughs> Actually, the game freezes, and then, like, a picture of Sakurai slowly superimposes itself on the screen. You have all these characters to pick. I don't know why I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> you want all these characters to pick. I'm gonna be ironic, you wanna be on the Mario, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I made Sakurai like an Italian mobster, but I kinda like it. I mean, look at his job. I don't know what the fuck that was supposed to mean. <laughs> Me either. Like, he's, yeah, he's the director for HAL Laboratories, what about it? <laughs> Why is that a monster? <laughs> he's he's soccer. He could do anything, <laughs> including live a life of crime. Yeah. He could. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Have you seen him like play arcade games? No. Have you ever seen that one image of him in all leather, just like with a? He has, like, a, a mask on his mouth, and he's, like, shooting. He's playing some shooting arcade game. For all you know, he's practicing and warming up for when he gets oh a sniper God. rifle. You know what, Yoshi? I think you might be onto something here. <laughs> and let's not even investigate it. Let's just go arrest him. 
<laughs> Let's just do it right now. Okay, we'll wait for the game to come up first. Then we'll ar Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Priorities. Give us what we want. <laughs> and what we want is Schmultimate. I had another idea for the story mode or venture mode, but like this is more of wishful thinking and if I lived in a magical dream world where everything I imagined came true, I think it would be really cool, and I know this is impossible, to like blend all the kind of games that they did, but with different characters. So like, say you're Captain Falcon and you're Shulk, and you guys are, like, playing a fucking puzzle game, like, you're in Dr. Mario World, and they just have to, like, figure out how to do it, and they're just like, what the fuck, what? <laughs> and you go, like, and then you're, like, with Link and Zelda, and you're, like, an F-Zero, and they have to learn how to drive the car, and they're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you just basically swap the characters into their own games, like, I thought that would be kind of cool. Like, it starts, oh, you're a regular-ass Mario, woohoo, and then all of a sudden, now you're in Xenoblade Chronicles, and he's like, okay, whatever. That'd be kind of fun. It'd be f I know it's fucking impossible to do that, but I just like to be hopeful and imagine dumb things. Something similar to that. I just want them to cross over into each other's worlds more than just the way they did in Brawl, where it was just like, they live in boring planet with no interesting set pieces. <laughs> Fruitful quest tasks. When did the game ever play Elise's theme? It was during the credits of the final story, but we were just talking and laughing over it. It's yet another romantic ballad. Because <laughs> if anything says Sonic, it's romance. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna be thinking that now. The love between a princess and her hog. I do wonder how long the story mode for Bomberman is. Seven gigabytes minimum. How fucking big is this? The Super Bomberman Rangers are going into space to fight the evil Emperor Bugler. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Not Emperor Bugler. <laughs> he bugs people. Hey, 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 Stop hey, it. hey, hey. Leave me alone. Hey, 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 hey. Can I borrow your cheese? Hey. No. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Can I borrow your milk? Hey, hey, hey. If I do, will you go away? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, now that I think about it, in order to relate this to Sonic, I was like, so what are you gonna do with the disc now? Are you gonna, like, break it or set it on fire, or...? I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna bury it in a time capsule up my ass and just see how long it takes to come out. <laughs> and if I will remember it when it does. <laughs> <laughs> In a time capsule. Up oh, my <laughs> Here it goes. No, Sonic 06 isn't expensive. It's like 20 to 30 bucks, depending on where you buy it. That's expensive to me. Yeah, that's expensive. It's expensive for, for, for the game, game, yeah. For a game of that quality. That age, too. Like, damn, Sega's kind of got Nintendo syndrome going on where they just don't lower the price of Sonic games ever. At least with Nintendo games, people are like, please re-release them. Nobody's really gonna ask you for this back. Imagine if it did, though. Imagine <laughs> if they did re-release it someday. <laughs> the remaster of Sonic 06. I know there's a group out there that's redoing the entire game if it was good. And from some of the videos they have where they modded and like changed the way the physics of the game itself work, it actually looks like a game. Wow. Is it uh, possible to play right now? I have no idea. I haven't looked at those videos in a while, but I know that project is still going on. I forget what it's called. It's on YouTube, but it exists, and I know that. I think the reason why they're doing it is just, well, A, because they can, and B, it's like, you know, there are some good parts to this game that you guys just didn't see. Like? You just didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't see it. I didn't see it either. <laughs> they came they came up as a little mean spirited, but like that that group actually is doing good work. It's just it's still Sonic 06. Yeah, they're not really fixing anything. They're just making it run better. Yeah, they're like making the levels if they weren't shit, but even no matter how much work they put into it, it'll still be Sonic 06. But if they're able to do that, then I would like I would like to see like them make their own games and stuff. 
because modding projects and like modding pre-existing games like that's the kickstart for people to start making their own original stuff yeah. before toby fox made undertale he was making earthbound hacks so you know there's if you ever want to, like, I'm not saying this is the surefire way to be a game developer or anything. Uh, modding tools and, like, fucking around with video games is a pretty good start. And basically the reason why Sonic Mania even exists, because those Christian Whitehead and all those other guys that basically were making mods and, like, uh, all these little Sonic things literally remade Sonic 1 and 2 and had a prototype for 3 from the ground up with all these better features and they basically made the games better than they were. I wonder if they're ever going to give the same treatment to like a 3D Sonic game. That's what everybody's asking for. I don't know if there's like a group of talented 3D people for Sonic, but I've heard of like the 2D Sonic guys forever. There is this fan-made Sonic 3D game where all the speed is based on like momentum and physics and it looks fascinating. I know the Game Grubs played it once. If you, like, run down a slope, you gain speed, and then you can use that as momentum to go through the level. So I get it if they if they wanted a challenge, I guess, if they were like, let's do Sonic 06. And that is true, the Quake guys... Yeah, the guys, the, the, the TF2 people originally modded Quake, so... Yeah, that's what, team, that's what Team Fortress started as, was a Quake mod. So if you're into video games, mod your games, kids. It's a good start. Yeah. I know that if I knew that earlier, I'd probably be a game developer and wouldn't have given up on my dreams. I have new dreams now, in case you're worried. I'm fine. <laughs> I agree with the way Waypoint puts it. A lot of it is just sort of, can we polish the turd? Yeah. Right. It's still not going to be a good game. But, you know, it's still an impressive feat. Fiuki Ando asks, what are the new dreams? The new dreams is to move in with my fiancé and pay bills. <laughs> Oh, and I guess I want to be a showrunner or whatever, which is why I've been developing my own characters and stories in secret for a while. And I only open up to that about a few people, too. I'm hungry. Fuck, I just realized I haven't eaten shit today. Yeah, what do you guys think? Think we're ready to wrap it up? Just about, I think. Yeah, I think so. Like, I had a feeling we were going to spend too long on last episode. Final story. Whatever. I'm going to stop recording now. I will as well. Wow, it's two and a half hours long. We're like an hour in and it was basically done. <laughs>